We'll see you then, Doppler Dave. To extra depth, in the past few weeks, there's one word related to the presidential elections you've probably heard over and over, polling. We'll take a look at what current polling numbers are and how that might relate right here to El Paso. But to first set the stage, let's take a look at how El Pasoans voted in the last election. According to the El Paso County Elections Department, El Pasoans voted overwhelmingly for Joe Biden in 2020, with Biden getting nearly 180,000 votes, more than double of Donald Trump's 84,000. When we break it down by county precinct, most areas favoring Joe Biden saw moderate to severe leads in votes, while most red precincts, barring one in which only one voter reported, saw only narrow preferences for Trump, often coming ahead by less than 100 votes or, in one precinct, just over. That makes El Paso significantly more blue than the national average, as Biden won at 51.3% of the votes compared to Trump's 46.8%. Now, recent polls come with obvious issues of former candidate Joe Biden dropping out of the race, but some polls now include Vice President Kamala Harris, who secured enough delegates to likely gain the Democratic nomination. In a poll from Reuters and Ipsos released yesterday, Harris has a narrow lead at 44 percent against Trump's 42 percent. And to help us understand what those numbers may mean and to gain a better insight on how El Paso votes, we have invited El Paso Community College government professor Dr. Amber Ochulata Lucero to speak with us tonight. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me, Stephanie. Well, first of all, do you think that the support that El Paso showed for Joe Biden will translate into support for Kamala Harris in 2024? I believe so. The Texas-Mexico border is, is pretty blue. Uh, Harris County is blue. Travis County is blue. Uh, uh, Bear County is blue. But for the most part, the Texas Mexico border is blue. So I believe that might be uh, significant just in terms of what we did in 2020 and then carry that forward to 2020, 2024. We have seen a lot of shift uh, over polls recently when Biden and Trump were going head to head. Mm -hmm. We did see some of those border counties turning a little less blue. So do you anticipate that El Paso could stay as blue as it is uh, in this coming race just in general? If you would have asked me Saturday the same question, <laughs> it might have been very different. Um, given the dynamic of Sunday, given the, you know, what had taken place on Sunday, just in terms of uh, President Joe Biden saying that he was going to drop out of the race, asking me then on Sunday night, I would have said that I think that uh, Vice President Harris is going to have significant support here on the border. I think uh, the border as well as reproductive rights have been the two issues that have been associated with Vice President Kamala Harris uh, over her time as Vice President. How do you think those two issues will play into when El Paso goes to vote in 2024 in November? Yeah, so this is the, this is the beauty of this election. Uh, is that she has brought a new energy just to reproductive rights, although she's been on that pathway for a very long time. Um, she's bringing new energy back to the discussion about immigration, as well as Gen Zers taking another look at this race. So I think the dynamics that we thought may have, you know, taken place a week ago have shifted significantly because of her presence. And so I think El Paso voters will take a look at, uh, you, I mean, we know what, what we live, how we live, our everyday lives. But I think her presence might allow El Paso voters to take maybe a fresher look mm -hmm. at some of the issues that have been prevalent for us for many years. And you mentioned especially reproductive rights, but she has been uh, tasked with uh, looking at immigration reform. How do you think that is going to play into how El Paso receives her? This is a weak spot for her, actually, Stephanie. Uh, previously, she had visited the border once, but in a speech she had mentioned, we have been to the border. So, you know, details important facts are important in a race like this so I think this may be her weakest area I know Republicans have talked about her being the immigration czar and what has she done and so this will be I think a true telling point of you know her immigration record what she's done how many times she's visited and what she intends to do as it relates to the border okay Dr. Archuleta Lucero thank you for being here thank tonight thank you for having for me Stephanie I appreciate y'all